it is bad quality, but we have one. This is an attempt at episode number four, Needle Talk, Needle Talk, Needi Talk about Neediles, yes, because we have nothing else to do. Let me see if I can boost my microphone even more. How much noise does it pick up? Not all of them. It's there. It's boosted as much as humanly possible. Before it just starts randomly clipping. I can turn the noise suppression down too, but I'll wait until somebody shuts up. So yeah, here we have a uh, galvanized peppermint dandy. I should change my stream total. Ow. Talk, talk, episode four. Inner friendly, friendly. Like I'm just gonna stay in that I wanna be like a category from now on. I'll switch from that to keep grooving out. Hold on, he's about to groove out. For it. There he is, let him go. He's having a good time. So yeah, I'll be here in as long as my internet holds up and if anyone can hear me. No, I wanted to play this game because I feel like it's a potentially decent example of uh, beginner-friendly stuff. Let's give her a go. I'm interested that the default mode is called hard, and also that there's only one mode. A lot of empty space, you could have, you know... Well, there's a lot of good stuff to say, though, as well. Everyone loves this tile set, right? How could you not love this tile set? And then I think that's just like a background image with transparency on it. Although, how do you get them to wiggle like that? Are they individual objects, or is it just a filter? Anyway. So right off the bat, you get a bunch of stuff that's really cool for a good player. I think just the aesthetic of the Uhuhu-related games is a huge part of why they're so popular. Because it doesn't look like... If you were to show somebody like a Guy Rock tile set, and it was just like... You know, default spikes on brown brick or whatever. I don't think that's like you see that and it says bad, but this kind of is beautiful by itself. Also, on these saves, cool, unique sound effect. Oh, I died on the first save. I guess I do want to go under or over. Yeah, I'd say there's nothing not beer friendly about these so far, especially this one. It's like quite. Beginner friendly. Well, I guess you want to, like, yeah, I was gonna say you don't want to do that right next to the wall. So, there's already, like, some 8 pixel usage going on. That's a little fuzzy to me. Oh, never mind. That's essentially just a buff gate. And then you get into, like, the more experimental shapes, like this stuff. This stuff bums me out because it's cool, but it's just, like, invert, you know? It's, it all just boils down to kind of an invert. What is going on here? Oh. I swerved your heart. I didn't say I was good at inverts, I just said that's what it is. That's also because I guess it's just like a... Uh, is it a gate or is it like... No, it is a gate, so I was going to say it's a height change, but no, it's not. I just suck. That's pretty cool, and it does require the movement at the bottom. That's like... You see like a bit of a shuriken shape in there as well, maybe. Come on. Oh, that was gonna mess me up for a little bit. Guarantee. I guarantee. Yeah, as a beginner game, you know, ramps up the difficulty right away. But uh, I think that's okay, because the first screen being like super easy is like kinda gives you a little bit of a, a breather. And then you've got like a lot of great stuff going on here within this like little formation. So you've got the shurikens, which you're going to see a lot of probably in the future, just the straight normal ones, not the, like, the attached ones or the squished ones. And then you've got this little ribbon dude, which is so cute, and it, it teaches you a bunch of stuff, but then it also is a ribbon. Oh, I was hoping I could save there, but I'm going to get these strange. Well. Um, but it teaches you, you can occupy the space under there, it teaches you about using the half of the block as a 16 pixel, and it, it's a ribbon, and it looks like a, can a little candy ribbon, which is perfect. How do I want to... I'm like, do I want to approach that as I'm getting into the 16 pixel? Yeah, basically you do. 
the top part is not like one of those you can do. Mm. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I was gonna say grab a line for that real quick. Ugh. And then I guess there's like different kinds of portals you can do as well. For one, like the graphic on the portal is amazing, that obviously is gonna help. Not just like not even just production value, like, what you have there, I guess, is essentially just a spinning graphic. I don't think it's... Like, it doesn't appear to be changing up lighting in any way. You do have that badass, um, visualizer line. So all of this stuff's important, and I, I feel like a lot of my games are held back by not just having a default fancy, shiny production layer. Because there's, like, you know, levels of fan game production. There's, like, the... I literally just threw this together in Game Maker with the default assets. There's the same version, but with JTool. There's like, you know, I, with all variants of untested shenanigans down in that bottom of the barrel. And then when you get to like actually produce games, it's like, well, at least I tested this and everything is an asset that looks somewhat cohesive. And then you get into like unique design, but that is like still visually painful, but interesting. Like you can put up with it because it looks so cool. And then you get into stuff that is just pleasant enough by using modified default assets or, or like restrained unique assets. And then you get stuff that has its own catered unique assets. And then you have the stuff with production value on top of that. And that's basically where this is. One level higher than this is like the ensemble package, where like the entire software suite is produced. You know, it has like fancy menus and achievements and stage warps and stuff like that. So this is like, you know, still near the top tier of production value. Which is intimidating, to say the least. As a designer, it makes me like, oh jeez, can I do anything this cool? The answer is no. Lots of using the, the spikes to like interact with them as they're open as well, which I really like. And this is nerfed as well. I was going to say that grab is nerfed. Normally that grab is still, like, if that was buffed by a 16 pixels, you can still do it. But the fact that it's nerfed means this is like a game that's trying to be beginner friendly, in my opinion. It might not come out executionally as beginner friendly, but I think conceptually it's very wanting to be that. Because a lot of the variants, like, those are, again, this is like two gates or whatever, right? But, but they're nerfed gates. <laughs> They could easily have been unnerfed and that jump would still be possible. Am I gonna? Okay, we're good, we're good. And I was gonna say, I'll have to buffer it, I'm just gonna find a whole right for it here. Give me a sec. There it is. Wait. No, it's one more. There we go. Well, hold left. You do tend to see a lot of the shapes, like, so... I'm divided on, like, traditional shape needle usage. Which I guess would be like those open shurikens or whatever, the little ones. Triangles are fine, but they're really just big spikes. Diamonds are hit or miss for me. And then, like, these things. So you got, like, an open ribbon, kind of, like an inverted sneak thief. Uh, hook jumps. And then the normal spikes with the mini spikes on the other end of them, which you see in like, dopamine style games as well. I don't know, they're kind of, like, bland to me. Not just because they're so common, but that's certainly a factor. Also, thank goodness for these saves really enjoying the short saves in this game. The corner's nerfed. Could, it could easily have been unnerfed. There's almost too much going on for me to perceive any one thing directly, which is like a real hazard when you're talking about games that are kind of up there in terms of their quality. Because like I can't just talk about the needle without talking about the aesthetic. I can't just talk about the aesthetic because the game is where I'm playing and involves needles. It's a bit difficult to talk about. So the anime medley is probably really important too. If you recognize a single song in the medley, you'll just be waiting for the part where that part comes around again. Which And because the medley is so long and the levels are designed to kind of stretch out that way, it kind of plays into itself. So I'm just going to hold right there instead. Okay, so what do you think about drops here? What's going on with the drop? Well, the very first rule of the drop is you almost always want to burn the double jump right at the top of the drop. Because if you don't do that, then you're not going to be able to pass as much. It's like if I hold my double jump all the way down there, it's really hard to get an alternate path that gets me to come up again. This is what I've seen Alice describe as like the traditional Chinese needle pathing, which I would kind of agree with. Um, it's just, you know, you do the double jump up at the top to lose your height, climb back on one side, and then do that jump over the middle piece to get to the second half of the level. I think you can do it like a max of two or three times in a level, but I don't know. I don't do it. I do it, I do it fairly often, but I usually will like mitigate the double jump loss earlier. I won't have you fall all the way down because of how much space it takes. 
and how hit or miss drops are for some people. I think I've got enough rules at this point to design a drop that isn't going to be hazardous to a new player as much as my old ones were. Um, I just drops are one of the parts of the games that I really like, so I tend to boom. I was like, can I one frame here? I probably could, but I don't. Oh, what was that? I shouldn't have been thinking about the one frame. Some of these distances are stretched a little farther than I would like, but it's also a consequence of just having to start to make design concessions. Like, even if you want a, uh, like a nerfed variant of every jump in existence, you can't always find that nerf variant. I don't know if that makes any sense. Ooh, geez. Trying to think about this drop as well, it's not... Yeah, I, I'm having a hard time thinking about it directly, just because of, like, confronting it gameplay-wise is very different than confronting it in the design. Let me get to the next thing, I'll take a look. No, I need to take a look now. Okay. So you got the initial jump, and this initial jump is the decider. You, if you raise that by a block, you have to double jump to get over it, which burns your jump right inside of here, and it's all maneuvering down. So you'll see that a lot. But what we have instead here is what effectively is like a, a half diamond or a double diamond that's been super duper nerfed. Um, it even has that little space for you on top if you want to use that. I wouldn't recommend it, but you definitely can. Like, come on, this game is beginner friendly AF with stuff like this. Whereas normally it'd be like, you know, you have to do a low cancel or whatever. Or like a, a two, or two or three frame to get in there, which is what I would normally do with a diamond type thing. Instead, you can just do that, which is. You can even V string fall all the way in there and back, back these game. And still have plenty of time to make it around. I just would look too early. So I think, like, you've got the, like, 16 pixel space area in the now which stretches up to 32. But another important thing, I guess, would be that, like, the the curve on the side of the obstacles is, is gradual, as opposed to being, like, uh, abrupt. So you have more time to think about them, and I guess, wiggle around them. And that's really good. Maybe I can try to approach them that, like, a drop scenario, using, like, an 8 pixel shave or whatever. I think 8 pixel shaves on blocks are really unexplored. Outside of like Marquito like stuff. It's probably the only place to see them in. Nope, saved it. That's cute too, because that's like a nerf Katie's thing, but it's just sort of there for you. Okay. This time. Lots of great stuff going on there. Very easy mini spice. Okay. I already got the drops, so I don't have to talk about it again. What's this one? Look? Again, great use of 8 pixel shades. That's so sick. I love that. So you could just 16 pixel there, I think. But then you kind of are like not in the best spot for the, sec the second part of the jump. So it's a little bit easier to go around. That's really cool. Or to go under if you can, which is a bit harder. But then once you're down there, you can jump whatever for free. That's really cool. That's really cool. And these are all just like maneuvers that I remember from back in the day of playing this game, but I don't like... I would never think to make any of these in a game. And I need to like find a way to internalize them to make them more available. Because it doesn't ha just have to be the series of games that do does this. This is Peppermint Dandy, by the way. Um, but holy cow, this is a good game. If you forgot how good Peppermint Dandy was, go ahead and replay it. This is so friggin' really good. That was my fault. <laughs> I thought in like a universe I was like, okay, go all the way around with low V-speed. No. Cannot. That's why that's a perfect jump. Well, I don't know, a perfect jump. That's a really good jump. It's also like a rare thing to see as well, too, where you have to burn your double jump in that context. I was gonna say, like, can I walk off and do it? But I don't think so. I think you have to jump. Which is a bit weird, because then that's a low jump, so. I'll take another look at it. Let's see. Nope, fair enough. Yeah, that that seems like really low, unless you're just meant to like... No, you're definitely not meant to fill jump unless it's a line dependent. So you're either meant to walk off and you can do it, or you're meant to jump super low, which doesn't seem right to me, given how easy the rest of the uh, stage is. It's a course. My fault. My fault. I'm missing, so I'm, I feel like I'm missing something here. I, I don't. 
There's no way you can gain that figure, though. No, I, I think you just have to... I mean, I, I guess that through testing it would probably reveal that that's either a 3 or a 2 frame. But, yeah, questionable for me. I, I would have nerfed it. Oh, hey, thanks for coming by. <laughs> that's a frightening emote. Yeah, we're, we're playing uh, Peppermint Dandy. Talking about beginner-friendly games if we can. Which this game is still doing a great job at for me. And I don't necessarily even disagree with the inclusion of like a couple really hard jumps in a screen, depending on their placement and how space they are out in the game. This is kind of decent, by the way. Yeah, like it's just a straight up gate. That's the first just like. Oh no, there's another one at the beginning to save too, which is really rad. That low jump seems to have been an anomaly so far. So then you've got like, I don't know. It's so. It does seem like it eventually becomes difficult to just work with the limitation of the spike shape. Like, there are only so many permutations you can make. And I'm not even just talking about jump shapes. I'm just like, if I want to make an object, how many things can I make out of triangles before I start wanting, like, circles and hepti heptagons and stuff? Try to make a heptagon, by the way. I can't do it. I can't do, like, a good heptagon. No, I can't do one in real life, but they exist in real life. What I'm saying is that out of triangles, I can't make an even, like, borderline comprehensible one. <sighs> Why did I. Screens are quite cramped feeling at times, not in a bad way, but just I would say that, like, maybe as a new player you would probably want to have just, like, more empty jumps. Um, I played, I think it was like a Yang Chun Simple Needle on Maker, um, which are dead simple. Like, if you're a new player and you want to try some needle games, try those, because there's, like, not, there'll be, like, one gate in, in the entire map. You know, you can finish, you can finish it real quick, um, or at least get to a point where you're going to get to that gate regularly. Why didn't I jump? Um, and maybe that's boring to some people, if you're like so skilled that you can just do it for free every single time. But at least for me, especially as somebody who like speedruns kind of still and used to speedrun a lot, it's really fun to see how far you can grind down a, a near-perfect run. And if something is easy enough to allow you to do that, then that's really fun as well. I think it's way more concerning to make maps more difficult on average than to make them too easy. Like probably almost nobody has that problem of making maps too easy. And if they do, they should keep having that problem. Oh, did I bomb? I did. I did again. How do I get away with that? How do I get away with that one? There we go. No, I was way too far down. I was thinking to myself, F jump, F jump, F jump. Yeah, I don't think you can, like, it doesn't seem like you can just sit there to stall it. You kind of have to, like, move. There we go. Why did I do it again? Well, I was thinking to myself, can I bonk or not? And even if I can, I want to avoid it. If it's possible with a bonk, it would definitely be possible without one. That block is furious. I wonder if it's a line related and if you get like, a forced bat or good line related. Or before that, because it's right there. It's fine either way, but give me that though. Hey. I like the saves that, like, you don't just land and, and get the thing for free. That's so what I was going to say. Is that possible? Big doubt. Huge doubt. Okay, fine. Run this way. Wait, what? Oh, it's a multi screen thing. That's why. I was all, wait, why am I still falling? Yes! I'm not sure how I feel about a multi-screen drop. Like, I think conceptually it is cool, but in practice it's not this fun. It's like, it's not that fun. And it doesn't, I would say like the amount of fun it is doesn't make up for, or like how cool it is conceptually doesn't make up for the lack of fun for me. Although it definitely took me a lot less time than the first time I played this game. Holy cow. That could be a, a huge choke point for a new person. I'm not a fan of how many gates I just did. Ah! Nerfed F jump, or buffed F jump, got me. And that's a buffed stack gate, or a nerfed stack gate, which is pretty fun. In, th in that application, I don't mind it, but look how many gates there are. Also, yeah, it was a buff, buff, buffed F jump. Instead of doing a 5 frame, I have to do a 3 frame. So thanks for that. I wouldn't have done that. That would have just done a normal left jump. 
I think for a new player, a normal jump is hard enough. Although like, I get the idea, like, if done above that space so that if you fall, you can try it again. But I think in practice, a lot of people just don't die, like I'm doing. Oh, I get it. You're supposed to bonk twice. Fair enough. Oh, no, you're not! Well, what the hell, then? Is that like a... What's with these, like, super low jumps required right at the end of the save? Because that's like... Especially if for a new player, if that's a, if that's a hardware issue, they may not know. So that's not my favorite thing. A little bit less reliance on shapes here. Even that drop shape is kind of like... It's nice, but it's flat because it doesn't contrast itself at all. Holy cow, I cannot do a 3 frame. Well, I guess I want a 2 frame in that scenario, but whatever. Uh. There we go. Are you just there to intimidate me? <laughs> Are you supposed to be like, oh no, is it? I think it's lowered just to be one pixel above the kid's head. Or to whatever, you know, whatever position is really. Oh, really? Choke jump? And I choked the choke jump. I jumped early. I got what I deserved. Choke jump. This time. Wait. So this is really neat. And if it works in and out, then I conceptually like it. I can tell you right off the bat that corner squishy. I mean, it's obviously 16 pixels. It's open at the top, but geez, that looks tough. I get that, like, you can start to create new movement scenarios by your That is a very close to non nerf Tady's play. What are you doing here? Oh, geez. Yeah, and then I... Please don't. Please don't. Okay. Gate? I even held right early. It still lives. There's at least one song in this medley I recognize, but I don't know where it's from, so my enjoyment of the medley itself is not very high. Oh, eight pixel shave. Yeah! First trigger usage of the game. Looks like you're supposed to just, yeah, right there, I would say, in the baby hit -o. Come on. Well, maybe even before that. Ooh. So far my one complaint about this game is that it requires a lot of low jumps in ways that are not conducive to new players. Under or over? It's right over. Hey, oh, the monk. I'm gonna say part of that turns into a 16 pixel, which I'm not a big fan of. Another question that I guess frequently comes up when designing maps is if this jump still fun if I nerf it. I feel like almost always the answer is yes, but in some scenarios it's no. Also, I'm stuck now. Nope. Like, I can't decide if I want to like jet or what. Cool use of the uh, attached shuriken, I'm not quite sure what else to call that. The butterfly shuriken, maybe? I feel like in the Hades veins right now, they're nerfed. I don't think I can make that that way. But... Choke! Oh, that's so fun, though, to do the little loop. Or to have the loop be doable. That's what I need. It's interesting to me, though, that you wouldn't enforce that with the trigger usage. Straight up diagonal. But in a way that you can get an easy setup. A little army of diamonds there. A troop of them, maybe. It's slightly more accurate. That's a really fun, um, but 
simple jump. It's like a hook jump area, and then you have like a trophy on top. That's really fun. Or is it like just an extended? I'm not really sure. Dang it. Very generous save spacing in this game, which I really like. For me, the way I almost always play saves is to play the level through without them, and then if I start to choke or die on one jump or section of a jump over and over and over again, I'll put a save right before there. Because then my thought process is, oh, well, this is just where the majority of people would naturally start to end the save anyway, because they'll just die here if they were to try to keep going. So I either put the save right before that so they can just start the save with the hardest jump next, or I'll put it at the end of the save, in which case you just have to complete that last challenge anyway. And at that point, you'd get a save like you would naturally. Hey. I'm gonna say it looks like there's a hold set up for that. And then where? Oh, I see it. I love little, uh, spike. Wait, I landed in there. Why did I reset? I love little spike cups. You can dip into the empty space. It's so fun. This one right here is a really good example. And the next one as well. Please help me save my jump. Thank you. Whew. Could have been grim. <coughs> That's maybe another thing as well. Have saves immediately accessible to the player. I think a choke jump before a save is moderately okay, but you don't want it to be like a super hard choke jump. It's not really a choke jump anyway. It's just the end of a save. This game also about giving you a chance to complete spike formations you maybe wouldn't get a chance. Like, that, um... Like this open gate here from the other side would maybe be a little bit more intimidating in a different scenario, but approaching it here is kind of not too bad. Because you all have an open space on the left to maneuver your starting position from. It's, you know, still not as easy as just starting next to it, but it's a good compromise. Oh, one minute. Quite cramped again. What am I doing? Dang it. That one jump can be more trouble. It does not look as bad as I think actually. Or rather, let me see the other way around. Let's take a closer look. Okay. Yeah, materially, what's going on there, I think, is just the, the invert part. But the proximity between those two is pretty tight. Uh, I don't think I can go over that, so I have to. I'm holding the angle and you gotta wait, go straight up and then pull. Yep, there it is. Yeah, one more there. I'm not supposed to single jump that, am I? It does not look single. It's three blocks. So I shouldn't be there two, two and a half. I swear that opening's snow glacial. Second hook is really difficult. My feet. Oh. Please. Hey. Okay. A little long 
Oh, save. I like that. Please not jump jump. No, what did I just say? I think it's okay, like, in a beginner-friendly game, you don't have to make every single screen the same difficulty. You definitely shouldn't, probably. And, like, you can have outliers, you know? You can have that hard screen, or a couple screens that are a little bit outside of the other of the curve, otherwise. Two jump jumps. Let's go. Since I was talking about that side skip thing, I'm determined to just do one side of it now. Really? Alright. That's a short save, but that last jump was a little scary. Pretty sure you have to do frame that. Maybe not. Oh, fair enough. Really. Damn. Started it too much. Ta -da. Hey. Oh, more trigger usage. Okay. So I don't know if I've not played the original Uvuvu Spikes. I don't know if there's any trigger usage in them at all. Um, would love to know. I guess it would be no. Um, I also don't think there's any platform usage in the originals. But I don't know for sure. And then we don't really have any gimmicks at all. Am I supposed to go around there or the other way? Yeah, because you don't have enough height there. That plane is barely nerfed at all! Wow, that's rude. Holy cow, dude. Oh man. That save is a mess. I like that. That scared the crap out of me. Aw, uh, why do you. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just a normal corner? Also, how come I can do the corner where I can't do the gate? What the hell's wrong with me? I got it twice. I it. Oh, there you go. Come on. It's just a gate after Hell. This is cool. I wish there were more levels that had skips in them. That's especially good for beginner-friendly games, I think, because you encourage older or, uh, veteran players to play it and like test it and give it feedback as well. What the hell? Why is that gate so hard? It wounds me. There we go. I literally can't do gates. I've lost the ability. Pray for, pray for me. Pray for Macho. I'm actually genuinely stuck this way. Corner makes sense, I suck at corners, and it's a weird corner. Game makes no sense. Just do the game. Wait, where do I go now? Oh, jeez. Oh, never mind. Okay. See you later. Multiple screen usage, really cool. Also, like those uh, hexagon dealies. That gap is cool looking, but a little difficult to get into. Oh, now we're down here, I guess. 
more hex guns, kind of just in a decorative way, but they're so nice. I don't know why playing this game is like kind of strenuous for some reason. Even though it's like easy, it's like there's a lot going on all the time to keep track of. Visually, maybe. Also, aesthetically, like I'm trying to digest everything as I play it. Nice little bit of trace on swap, you like to see those. Unconventional pistol snaps, I guess. Oop. That's a little tighter than it looks. I'm just trust line matter for a while. Not. Is it a bust F jump? Is it a nerf F jump? It's a default. It's nerf. What am I, I, yeah, but I was thinking to myself, well, if that's another required low jump, I'm going to save, I'm going to be mad. Uh-oh. I can tell it's a nerf def jump because of how I mocked. There, see? And it totally is, too. I, and I will say again, let's go back down here. There's the three frame or whatever, but watch the four frame. Uh, like, I don't know, dude. Required three frame at the end of every, uh, not required three frame, but like three frame or lower. Kind of sus. It's funny how long these games are. Oh, yeah. I think one of the cool things is like, if you're just going to have an aesthetic to a screen or whatever, you can do the aesthetic and the arrangement of the blocks first and then worry about the spikes afterwards. And it doesn't have to have a lot of jumps to it as long as some of the jumps look kind of cool. Definitely want to save anything. Oh, what am I doing? I wasn't looking. I should have done that thing where you look at the jump before you. What was that old saying? Look before you leap. Screw that. the first time. I really like jumps that require that turnaround, but you gotta be, I don't know, to me, gener be more generous about how much space you give to the turnaround. So I hope jumps usually work really well, like this one that's coming up. The difference being that this one wants you to, uh, because it's buffed by this the block. Oh, I'm not getting my jump in, that's why. Um, you have to do the low jump instead, which I'm not a fan of. I wonder if it's common for anyone else to just pay, play poorly when you're tilted. Like, not even a hard jump, but a jump that just feels unfair or, you know, poorly implemented will get me tilted, so that's really cool. I like that. And then I'll play it just a lot worse after that, which is not a, I'm not a fan of. Probably wants me to... There we go, we finally got a full jump for once. Great, nice little hook usage as well. Really reduced choke jump. I feel like that screen should have come much easier or earlier in the uh, game, considering how easy it was. More multi-screen stuff. This drop is a little bit much. Wait, what? Oh, I see. It's just go that way. Ribbons. Definitely like the ribbons. Divided on that eight pixel. Oh, 
Come on. I can see the spot for it. I'm just gonna have getting it. I can start to see like the common ethos a little bit in the designs. And what I think maybe is the case, and if Wolfie ever watches this or comments, I would love to know. Um, that as you go on, you have to resort more to like a formula, like a soft formula for what makes a good jump, as opposed to looking at every single jump and being like, oh no, this jump isn't different enough from the one before it and the one before that, and two screens ago I had this. You know, it's it's sort of like you, you find a, a safe or comfortable jump formula and then you use it a little bit just to give yourself breathing room. That's the way it is for me, at least, when I'm designing really long screens. And real, I guess they're for really long games as well. Because you can't, you, if you design every jump like it's a, well, for one, often the jumps end up too difficult that way. Um, but even assuming you manage to keep them all appropriately balanced, you run out of juice way easier or way earlier that way. Like you can't creep up the creative output if you don't have like a little bit of breathing room. So I'm just starting to notice like, oh, Wolfie in this, start, likes to do this kind of thing. And, uh, and maybe you'll see that a fear, fear few more times before you finish the game. Which is not a bad thing, because then you get a chance to get used to it and adapt to it and decide whether you like it. I guess if you really don't like it, it's a bad thing, but then, you know, you don't have to keep playing. Obviously these drops are base AF. Um, and I just like the drops in games in general. These are a big inspiration for me. I'm just struggling like it's a fine part. That jump more than anything makes like a slightly changed corner or whatever. Yak. Yeah, just the turnarounds are quite tight and funny. Which again, I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I'm just struggling with all right now. It's good to have a harder level, and that's the second jump in the level, basically, or the third one's right. So I don't have a problem with being pretty difficult. It's just front loaded, not so. This one sucks just because the left button on my controller is... I don't know, there's so much more. Wait, hold on, am I supposed to go in there? Is that where I'm supposed to go? I'm supposed to go in there. Is that right? I'm going in there. I... Never mind. But I think that is where I'm supposed to go. So touche. When people say they like pathing a needle, I definitely agree. I just... I My brain is so tiny I can barely comprehend the one intended path. So the second you, like, at the beginning I was like, oh, I'm supposed to drop down to the next screen. No, you, you land. <laughs> and then right there I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so paralyzed with, with the openness of choice. I have like a big flashing arrow pointing directly in the direction I should go. And if you wanted to have attached to it um, the number of frames I should press the jump button for and hold the directional key for as well, that would be great. Uh, and I'll just do it. But you got to tell me all the other stuff. You think you could do any jump height on command? Absolutely not. I don't even think I could do a five frame on command, which is probably my best jump height. Uh, next best would be a two frame, which I do not think I could do on command, and probably a I don't know after that. Maybe like maybe a weird one, like a thirteen. Thirteen's not that weird. It's pretty common for raised gates and stuff. But, you know. 12 is a weird one, um, and there's a 12 frame limiter that I found, so that's not a good one. I think about those a lot too, like almost to the extent that it pains me and I want to escape them. Not just the uh, 12 frame limiter, but just like height limiting jump setups. Because you kind of like, to my mind, have sort of a choice when you start a jump, which is either you allow the player the full axis or a full jump, which is up to the 23 frames or whatever, um, or you don't you curtail it at any point before those 23 frames are up. Um, and to me, the latter is more interesting. Holy cow, I said. 
I love that little save spot. That looks so cute. Gonna be here for a while, folks. Truth be told, if you can beat this game in under an hour, though, it probably is like fairly beginner friendly, I'd say. And also, again, it's just like long. It's not like the content is super difficult. It's just there's a lot of it. Um, I think this is the one probably main screen I've gotten stuck on so far. And it's just that section of the climbing. Which is not, uh, and then again, not even frame based, which is really nice. I can't even complain about it from that perspective. I just don't have the, uh, the movement down. And then this part just scares the crap out of me. Because, like, the left part of my D pad is whack. You can't, like, I can't tap it really. I kind of have to, like, go back and then, like, hope I overshoot by less. Or, like, compensate for it by jumping early. Thank you. Oh my gosh, what is that? It's a Dush Nilla. I don't know what that is, but it's horrifying. Thank you for sharing it. <laughs> Alright, do we go down here? Why is this? This section is dead easy compared to that stuff. I mean, I guess that's the incentive. Give you a breather after your. Uh, I want to save all the way over here. Maybe it's not as easy as I thought. I might just have the like first try syndrome. Oh, me... Needle snake, yay! You love to see it. it. Doesn't necessarily look like a snake, but I just think of like when you do like a long section of, of like curved and attached spikes, I just think of it as a needle snake. Because they're cute. Oh, you love to see it. Wait, what? Okay, yeah, no, fair enough. That's interesting because there's less open space this way, so you would think it wouldn't be the way you go. But then it is. Can I still jump up? Yes, yes I can. Oh, fair enough. So, oh, fair enough. I might steal this. I'm gonna straight up steal this uh, pixel shape after I'm playing. Hey! Oh, look at that! We got we got cubes. The rare and fortuitous. I so one one thing I'd like. At least I hope to get to talk about it. I was hoping I would get to talk about it while playing this game. Is the use of, like, weir not weird, non traditional shaped spikes. And that doesn't mean custom spikes, it means using the regular spikes to get weird shapes, like squares and shurikens and stuff like that. I don't know how to use them well, because I feel like the movement gaps they create are either too, like, clunky, they don't, they look neat, but then they don't work conceptually or executionally, um, or they're just too bland. But I don't know, if anyone has like any particular advice on how to use them, I would love to know. Because I think they're cool, I just suck at using them. Bold decision to have it drop that far into the jump. Or into the save, rather. Also, I suck. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Why did I... I didn't see that. That's right now. Yeah, like this one you can just treat it as a 16 pixel, which is a bummer, because if you had to do the swerve, it would be way cooler. And I wonder if like a variant of it was tested with some of the shapes further out. And it just didn't end up working. Come on. Nope. Nope. You need to keep holding. You need to stop holding. This drop's quite complex, I kind of like it. A little bit more of a, a nuanced pathing than you would normally see. Yeah, that's not that one. I think you can sort of turn it or whatever, so that's fine. That, however. Yeah, that, not a fan. Definitely required some three frame there. Rude. Nerf plane. Oh, fair enough. 
Wait, why did I? No, you definitely need to jump again there. Am I supposed to? Is that nerf and I'm supposed to full jump? Is that what I'm not seeing? kind of similar to the problem I had with them last time, where like they, the shape they created, it was like more shaped, where it looks like you're supposed to go, but you're not. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not going to deny that I'm done. I'm very done. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, thanks, Perfectionator. Uh, Perfectionator sleep has been sliding through the 16 pixel gap, and they're correct. That, is, that was the solution. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, we're playing Peppermint Dandy. And talk about beginner friendly games if we can. Which this one I think is doing a great job of with some very minor exceptions, which I've so far is just like occasionally at the end of a save there'll be like a required three a low jump of like three frames or lower. And I feel like that's A overused and B isn't necessarily a good idea for a beginner friendly game. Other than that, this is a banger though. Oh these are really those are really fun jumps, a little back and forth. I'm always a sucker for anything that plugs that, uh, that back and forth movement. Which you can get with the nerfed plane, which you see here, that's just a nerfed plane, basically. Um, but then there's other stuff that goes into it too, also. Where the hell am I supposed to go? Oh, thank you. Platform's only used for, uh... Can I beat up that? Hold on. You could probably PTJ it, no problem, too. Miku was here, they'd know for sure, just by looking at it, so that was a 4.5 of But I don't know for sure. Ah! <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! I'm like super nervous. I, would, I don't really care about the choke, and I don't think I'm going to do it again, but that was just super fun. I had, a, I had a fun time. Fun times were ahead by all. I could have saved it, but no. Sometimes, you know, when you see a jump, you don't need to. Nope. Are they creative mini spike usage here? Even if they're just used in somewhat traditional shapes, the way they turn the jumps is cool. Also, I love a good fall into the hole and then climb back up type of drop. Just like in the middle of a level or whatever. 
you see them normally done with just like corners. When you fall into the corner and then you gotta jump out of the corner. And you can make the corner up two, three blocks deep. But uh, yeah, I like them when you get a hold climb. There's no way back in the corner when you get to go all the way around. I feel like more than missing the execution of a jump, I'll just like forget where I'm supposed to go. Mid jump, I'll forget. I'm almost always just performing just my muscle memory, I guess. So uh, you could full jump that for enough then. So that this is again a buffed F jump. Hold on, real quick. I want to see one thing. Okay, you can bonk and do it, and that is possibly my only forgiveness of it. Because I was going to say required 3 frame otherwise, but no. If you can bonk and do it, then it's theoretically doable by anyone. It's just slightly more difficult. So what's, the, what's a good way down here? Back on the right side? Or I want to go left again. I'll go left again. This is the right direction? Why? <laughs> okay. It sounds like it was tested to avoid people like me choking, so that's good. Little mini hook jump. That's really cute. Still just work it's like a mini a regular hook jump, but only gives you the space of a mini. Because you can still wrap around. I don't like how low those uh spikes up there are. Oh, I love those. I love shaved inverts, they're so cool. They can be pretty painful to do depending on the configuration. Especially at like full jump distances, they get kinda painful. Oh man, they're so cool. And that's essentially like a nerf to drop invert as well then, just rand. It's nerfed so significantly though that it doesn't... Like, you still have to approach it differently, but it's not like executionally painful in terms of like frames. You don't then have to like one frame or whatever, you know. Although with a, I guess with a drop invert you'd just be full jumping anyway. But you don't have to angle a full jump or anything, you can like tap into it, it's just easier. Hence the term nerfed. Raspberries. Actually, it's a peppermint. I believe this is the first Andy game I played just because it was green. And green is one of my favorite colors. I don't know if it's common to have more than one favorite color, I do. Ooh. F jump, don't mind if I do. Oh man, is that the ultimate dandy? Is that the dandy which we've come all this way for? I know, right? Green just it just adds like a charming, fun aesthetic. I think when pulled from the IWC, green was the most popular color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neon green. So this this game would be perfect for you then, <laughs> if you haven't already played it. If you have to replay it, because you'll remember how good it is. I will say that it's like um, kind of exhausting though, just because it's so long. You kind of just were like, oh man, I've been doing kick-ass stuff, but then instead of doing like a break from doing kick-ass stuff, I have to do more kick-ass stuff. And it, it, that would, I think, probably be my only complaint about it as a series, is like, make, make it slightly shorter, and then the people who finish it will be like, oh man, I wish that was longer. Although I guess that's a good complaint to have. Like, I wish that was shorter. Well, mm -hmm. or like, you made too much good stuff. No, but then again, I think it's like, the, the argument is it gets diluted, probably, right? And then there was like, if you removed all those required three frames at the end of uh, saves and stuff, I'd be a lot happier. Is that not a 16 pixel? I don't think it, maybe it's not, I can't tell. What am I doing here? Hold on. There we go. You can feel the design kind of get start to get unhinged towards the end of the game too, like just drawing giant ass lines of spikes and being like, whatever, deal with it. Uh, which I can definitely relate to. I think some of the jumps I do bad on are not necessarily the jumps I would straight up have an executional failing with, but I look at them conceptually and I'm like, that's not a good jump. Like, I think unless you have perfect line, you have to low jump there, but I don't know. If, if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. In fact, I think I am wrong, so I take it back. But if that were the case, then it would make sense. I want the dandy, I need the dandy. Should tame him. A little cramped, but liking the uh, needle snake feel again, where you just kind of like attach the lock and whirling onto itself. So. 
So I think you can do a lot just by, um, I can't get past there right now, for now. Um, just by making a little block formation and then trying to design like an obstacle course. Like, it's the fundamental, right? So if you can make like a couple of jumps that are using the space, as opposed to just going up and down and having walls everywhere. Um, well, these walls are a bit linear, but... I'm really bad at gauging my height on like burn your double jump style things. Like that's raised, I have, I have to guess I'm really bad at those. Appropriate level of challenge for like the end of a uh, beginner game though. And yeah, I, w I would say again, like games aren't hard, hard to play, there's a lot of them. And they will have one or two grindy segments. Maybe now, may I take that back? That wasn't even grindy at one time, it was just a matter of finesse. the one I recognize. What is that from? Oh, and I recognize that too, so fair enough. Can I find a hold right here? Or do I have to start it every time? Scare me. Because again, they seem invert based, and I'm mad at those. Some of these jumps where it's just like um, a rough shape and then you have to worry about bonking, I really enjoy. I feel like they're very kale based as well, as you see them a lot in the Crimson Noodle games. Um, but I would like to try and kind of do them, because I don't do them that often. I have some formulaic ones that I do, or I'll, like, I'll put in a block if I think I can maybe provoke a bonk interaction, but I don't have like a good formula for doing that. I like those little ears. Oh, me cubes! Cubes! Cubes. I'm stoked for the mini cubes. I think one thing I'm trying to understand how it works, and I don't understand quite yet, is that mini spike obstacles, or just the size of the mini spike, creating like a diamond or a cube or whatever, is an interesting obstacle because of how small it is. Um, it's not that it is part of a bigger thing that you want to bring the structure of, it's just one little thing that you want to bring the structure of. Um, why did I, I wasn't thinking, I just didn't know. Also, is that a face? It's got a face to me. Really snappy, it was a great 8%. 
useful usage. Save my jump just in case. Uh, are we getting closer or is this the part where I'm like, oh yeah, I saw the big dandy, therefore I assumed it was close. But actually it was a billion screens away. This game's hella long. Is there a walk-off line for that? Hold on. Yep, there it is. <laughs> That's so funny to me because if you never played a game like this, you'd be like, how did how did you just do that? That was some weird magic. You, <laughs> the spike was killing you and then it wasn't. Exactly. Do the plane. Oh, fair enough. Attempting to turn into trigger needle at the end of the game, I, I can dig it. The levels progress with the skill. Mm. I was trying to actually move before the plane got there, but no dice. Oh, that was too early. The weird thing about this trigger usage is it's not necessarily like what I would think of as traditional trigger usage either. I mean, I guess maybe, but normally you like, you have what happens with a more direct sense of pathing, I guess. Whereas this is sort of just like, oh, that opened up in a way. Joking. I told you. Did not tell you. Should I have not jumped? No, there's no way you could have jumped. I wonder how many times the medley loops before you finish the game. It's a long ass medley and a long ass game. Should now. I don't know if it's possible to like fully talk about properly, but it does bum me out how like gimmick and trigger needle and all different types of like needle expansions outside of normal stuff um, are because they're made by players who are already super familiar with basic needle and are therefore like a bit skilled as well. You don't get like the entry level skill barrier to the gimmick. You get like the gimmick but implemented at like a level like a 50 or a 70 or whatever. Um, which having to get on top of that is already like, oh my gosh, it's so much. Where I would want like always the most basic implementation first. And that's like pretty a traditional design time. Maybe I guess it's messed in fair games. So they don't need to, you know, you're just making content for the people who are to play it. Mm -hmm. The answer for talking about beginner friendly, the premise is that you don't want to make a a good thing in and of itself, I would argue it is. For me, the amount of stuff I learned specifically about game making through fan games has been really useful and eye opening. Um, and I think giving more people the opportunity to learn stuff like that or to have experiences adjacent to it is a good thing. So that's my motivation. Consistency needle, or at least with like more traditional needle, like somewhat medium length save or longer saves, is you start to get not automatic but like kind of into a groove with your execution sometimes, which I normally don't because I don't play consistency needle that much. Um, or like when you're doing a save or whatever, you're, you're doing each part of it as you remember. Please, 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 please. Two choke jumps? Close to y'all think we are to the dandy. You think we're close, or just the dandy very far away? Oh, 
Also, you can see a formula thing there, at least. To me, it's a formula thing. So that when Wolfie saw in one of the previous drops that you could use the shaped corners without necessarily affecting the drop itself, but just the implied shape of it. Uh, well, golly luck, you did it again. Right there, boom. Neither of those side shaped corners are going to be ones that I have to worry about, but they're there to imply that you don't want to hit them. Love the way that that's like in that half a yard. Oh, sorry, I don't like it. <sighs> well, I remember the first time I did this, I was like, I have to do it without saving? That's not fair. <gasps> dandy! We understand Dandy the Dandy. I have to eat all the dandies. Nom, 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 nom. Nom nom nom. More dandies. See all the dandies. Nom nom nom. Nom nom nom. That's it. We understand he's a dandy. Great game. Still great. Um, now I think I have time to design like one beginner map if I can. I'm gonna try. So give me a minute. skin specifically for it. This is a skin I made specifically for a beginner friendly game that I usually did not end up releasing. But what are some types of beginner friendly games that can include? Well, empty space is very beginner friendly because then you don't have to worry about doing as many jumps. And the jumps don't have to be a scarier kind of thing. We'll start you off here. Do you want to start with the gate? To me, that matters a lot in terms of how how beginner friendly we're talking here. Somebody who's never played a video game, then I would say no. Somebody who's played a video game before, I would say yes. And then you can do this. No problem, right? Like, if you're a little bit more ambitious, you can do this. Because that shows you that bonking affects your PC. Now, that's maybe a little ambitious to do for a first jump. Because in so far as I was aware, without, without a bunny hop, even with best of line, I can't do it. Yeah, right? So you would then either learn that you have to double jump and learn about bonking in one in one jump. And that depends a lot on you, like, is the player noticing those things? Off of the first jump, maybe not, right? Um, but I kind of like those ideas for the jump. So I would maybe do something like this for the first jump. And maybe like. Well, no, because then you lose that. So. Yeah, I like that quite a bit. So let's try that then. Now, what you can also do. Do a traditional thing here. Fell down a bit. There's the minimum required space for that to be free on a hold at any e speed. So you do up by one more, you will die. But a 16 pixels now, not a whatever. Uh, however, this is also the correct trajectory to have a b speed effect. Or. A, or Right? 
So, like, you, you would be string into that. So, that's just like a little bit of an offhand knowledge. If you want to do that, that's free on a hold. You do this, it's free. But a new player, a new player won't know that, but they'll probably be holding a direction. So there you go. Now the last question I would have here is, do I want to include a swerve at all? By a swerve, I mean like a landing of some kind. And there's like stuff you can do to make the landing more complicated. It depends a lot, right? So let's take a look. If I do that as a, as a landing, Oh, you can even do it like that, although I would prefer the extra space to do it. Which would probably look something like that. Maybe. So I think maybe, I'm in the maybes about this. For me, it's, it's like, if I was having trouble with it at first, the new player will probably have trouble with it at first. And I think maybe the t it's the timing of the swerve that is the problem. Which is, there's a couple things you can do about, but given the height, we have to change the start and height of the initial jump, which wouldn't be too problematic. That's probably the best solution, man. Change the starting height of the initial jump. I usually do stuff like that, but I think that would be a good solution here. more stuff I can do once you're done there. Living up all this empty space in the left, guess what? Don't care. Good beginner rats have empty space. Sometimes it's literally just empty space. Alright, just need to confirm. Free tree. Thank you. And then I think the second thing you probably want to do here is either require the walk off or require a jump. This is when you do the walk off. I think it is technically possible to look visible. Do the jump. In fact, what we could even do to include more mini spikes. It's delightful. Let's just leave it right with that. Let's see if we can get more cool mini spikes.
this and I'm just stealing everything. And then I'd be like, oh, F jump? Nerf F jump. <laughs> Which is the high cap, but then you just do this. Hey, it's ringing. We can do some cool things next to it, though. I personally think that's a cute one. It's a needle stick. Classic hit for anyone who didn't know. The hit of hit of hit of your mouth. Hit of. Yeah, that's friendly. That's pretty cute. Because then you can walk out there from whenever it's safe for your
It's pretty close to call it there, so let's do like a gentle walk off. Is that the right one? It is. It looks a little close on that side. Some people say they prefer the gate formation to a normal one. I'm not sure how I feel about it. I do like it. Just like a fun mind thing, just to show it off. Because when you're a new player, you don't necessarily know about stuff like that, right? So it can be fun just to encounter it sometimes. I think that's the safe for hand. I was going to say, so if I took away. Uh, yeah, there you go. Going well, the other way is weirder because of the stem. Just trust me, it is. It would be really cool if I could refill your, uh, your double jump here, which I guess I could. A lot of people would have the like, incentive to jump out of it or whatever, but then you don't need to, really, because it doesn't do anything. So. Classic hot water shade. 
sure what to call this one. Probably won't end up releasing it as a thing. Unless I do end up doing beginner friendly game screens and nothing but stuff like this. It's on the table. Says just uploaded a new hardest level, and I want to make her nearly had a heart attack from anxiety. They did save. Yeah, that sounds about right for consistency needle in general, which is why I don't play it. I can't deal with that much. My chest like hurting from the small man of anxiety of casually playing through peppermint. So you're on some uh, you're on some next shit on the regular. I'm pretty sure. Congrats though, uh, if you managed to get it. And if not, I'm sure you will soon. Just exploring the beginner friendly stuff we learned in Peppermint Dandy to see if we can make a fun level that's easy to play. Maybe too tough there. Now I'm like, is this the one you want right before? Maybe. Let's find out. So 75 second long save, relentless hard needle. Yeah, you should catch me not playing that in any dimension, but I'm really impressed every time you manage to upload something like that. Yeah, the second half's almost too easy. I think the only part I'm questioning is that. Must I lie? Okay. I don't know, I keep seeing fun. Possible skip, I'll stick to that real quick.
imagine getting in more stream hours, but it's so... I don't know what the right word is. I just find it very mentally exhausting. Especially if I'm going to talk about stuff for long periods of time. I think this works quite well as a beat around. what I like though, I think this would be like a 20 or 30 to 20 if maybe than that one jump. I like it. I might put it in the sample pack. I'm gonna call it sample in the hopes that I put it in the sample pack. And then I'm gonna take a break for a bit. Um, this has been episode four of Needle Talk. I'm unsure as to whether or not my recording quality is listenable, but I've been doing the shows and they'll show up in the VODs. Um, so thank you anyone who did manage to tune in. I probably will be back later today with one more dev stream, but I'm not sure. Till then, bye for now.